Okay, welcome back. So it is week three of the Winter League, and I realized it's been a while since I kind of talked about why I'm doing this and why I started. So I started this channel this summer, basically, started putting out content, and the idea was to have you join me on the journey as I delved into competitive shooting and just tried to make myself a better shooter all around. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, the first match I believe that I competed in was the beginning of June. Did a couple steel challenges and then July I moved on to uh, the adult leagues, which is kind of like an outlaw league. It's not sanctioned by USPSA, IPSC, uh, those things. It's just run by my, by my local range. So moving on, uh, winter league week three, I'm gonna be rolling footage while I talk. Uh, I pre-ran the course, ice cleats were still mandatory, the cold is definitely a factor. I've gotten better at managing that through week three. So I had hand and toe warmers, I had uh, my cross country skiing gear on, I had long underwear top, long underwear bottom, All lined right. pants, you Thank you. and made sure not to take off my right. gloves until right. right before my run started. Are you ready? And ready. if there was a delay, I put my gloves back on. In addition, they had added warming stations, so there was a, a place to hopefully warm up in between ah, runs. I, I, I don't one. recall I don't what the temperature was, but it was probably in the high teens, if I remember. Uh, moving on, so I pre-ran the course a number of times like I do and even with the ice cleats nice, at the nice, very nice. end of the course I made a hard stop simulating uh, hitting the trigger for the swinger with my foot and I slid out and sprained my right wrist. Uh, it wasn't a bad sprain but it definitely uh, affected me on week three night and I'm still feeling the effects here a week later. So the course, uh, the course was basically just a straight line to the end and you had six plates alternating. So basically kind of emphasizing transitions. Um, in my rifle run, I missed a plate and I did not make it up. You can hear me talking about it, but I didn't make it up because I have not yet had mag carriers made. So I don't have a very good way of reloading. So kind of my goal was not to miss any shots. I have 25 round mag course is 24 rounds if you don't you know if you don't miss any and uh, so I was able to finish the run but I didn't want to make up and jeopardize uh, which I probably in hindsight I should have just taken that extra shot and slowed down for the remainder of the run to mitigate the miss but I did not so Are that was ready? probably ready. a mental Stand error on by. my part so mag changes were an ah. issue uh, Moving on, the pistol. Pistol ran perfect. I'm very happy with the CP33 moving forward. If anything happens, I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, the next point I wanted to touch on, I was hoping you, you guys could help me out with this. My idea in running rimfire rifle and pistol and running rimfire yeah, rifle I might have first is it. that Theoretically, then I have somewhat of a familiarity with the course. I've actually run it, even though it's with a different platform. So that's kind of been my thought process. However, now that I've done that, I, I do think there's validity to that. But now that I've done it, I almost feel like it's uh, it can be a disadvantage as well because it gives you a false sense of uh, your ability level with a, with a rifle when you move to the pistol. So for example, at the end, I moved hard up on that, uh, hit the trigger for the swinger, and basically the idea is hit the trigger for the swinger, clear the two plates on the left with four shots, move to the left plate behind, uh, behind the, the no shoots, clear that, and then clear the right uh, target behind the no shoot before it comes up so you've got just you're basically utilizing all your time with shooting. There's no wait time whatsoever. That's how to best to manage that swinger. And then you clear the last right two targets and finish your run. 
I was able to do that with the pistol, I mean with the rifle, but when I moved to the pistol, I found that I was not able to, and, and I don't recall, but I think I got a no shoot because I was just that little bit behind on transitions with the pistol versus the rimfire rifle. And then also just the other factor was uh, the rifle is obviously easier to, to run um, as a platform, so I found that um, it wasn't a huge deal, but I'm just wondering if it might actually be better to run the pistol first and then run the rifle. Still messing with that, just some thoughts. I'd love to hear your feedback on that if you have any. Uh, next week, so next week I am going to be having mag carriers made by Frost, Frost Modular Systems. It's a local guy here in town named Joe Kim. He runs Frost Modular and he also runs Phalanx, Phalanx Academy, which is a top-notch training uh, outfit. And so I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to get both AR mags made, mag carriers made, and uh, mag carriers for the CP33. And that way, uh, that won't be an issue. So, so far that has been a huge issue. I've been trying to carry them in my pockets and reload. And um, it's just nice to have, like ideally I won't miss because the courses are all 24 rounds and I can get 30 rounds in my CP33. I can get 25 rounds in my CMMG mags. But if I do miss more than once, then I'm out of luck. And then uh, mag change just becomes an onerous, lengthy process that just just kills my time. So, so that about wraps up week three. I hope you enjoyed the footage. And as always, I'd love to hear your comments. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me on this shooting journey. LW Road out.